This hour, it was a murder that rocked Bakersfield. A teenage boy savagely killing his mother back in 2001. That boy, Parker Chamberlain, is now 33 years old, and he's making a bid for a lighter sentence. His hearing in Superior Court ended today. The case now in the hands of Superior Court Judge Michael Bush. Parker Chamberlain was convicted of murdering his mother, Tori Knapp, and was sentenced to 26 years to life in prison. But the Department of Corrections asked the court to consider reducing Chamberlain's first-degree murder sentence. Corrections officials say Chamberlain has been a model prisoner, and that's significant. The CDCR has only made this kind of resentencing recommendation for 33 inmates out of some 120,000 prisoners statewide. But prosecutors and loved ones of Chamberlain's mother say Parker Chamberlain also exhibited near-perfect behavior for 15 years before he stabbed his mother 35 times. He was popular, handsome, all of those things, and everybody that went out with him, the girls that went out with him, their parents loved him. I mean, you know, I can remember several of my friends whose daughters dated him said, yeah, he's the kind of guy you'd want your daughter to marry. And with that in mind, he not only committed this crime, but he premeditated it. He went home, he went and he killed his mother in the most gr gruesome way and took the phone out of her hand when she's probably trying to call for help. He was a model student. He was a model for, uh, grade school, junior high. He got to skip a grade. He was always the first chosen to be student of the month. I got the call. I, I said it couldn't be Parker. It couldn't, it, he could not have done it. But the mattress was bloody. Between the mattress and the wall, the floor was bloody. And uh, <clears throat> the walls had blood on them. Her intestines were on the floor outside her body. Thought that I, that continues is whether or not Tori knew her son was killing her. Ultimately, it is Judge Michael Bush's decision now. Is Parker Chamberlain's behavior in prison so outstanding that he deserves an earlier, if not immediate, release from prison? 17's Olivia LaVoice was in the courtroom again today and joins us now to continue the story from there. Olivia. Well, Jim, Judge Bush said today he isn't aware of any other court in the state that's had to make this kind of ruling for a first-degree murder case. Even former District Attorney Ed Jagel sat through some of the hearing. Judge Bush said it best himself. This will not be an easy decision. Prosecutor Nick Lackey called the final witness in this case, the original lead investigator who recalled the crime scene with chilling detail. Out of the many murder scenes I'd been to, this is easily one of the top two most violent scenes I'd ever, ever been to. What was the other one top two? The one involving uh, the children and the five family members murdered by Vincent Brothers. Kruger recalled how Chamberlain seemed extremely agitated the night of the murder. His pulse was high and he continuously licked his lips. On cross-examination, assistant public defender Peter King focused on those observations. Did you or did you know about that, that those symptoms were associated with increased testosterone? I don't know anything about that. Chamberlain's urine was tested for steroids, which came back negative, but Kang says investigators recovered evidence of testosterone that Chamberlain was injecting, but proper analysis was never done to examine the levels in his system. Judge Bush then instructed both sides to submit written arguments he will review before making his ruling. Then he addressed the very divided family in the packed courtroom. I get the sense that there's two sides on this. I understand that. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. He then made it clear whether or not he's the one to help Chamberlain get out of prison, it's going to happen one day, no matter what. So for those of you who said they give a job or have a place for him to live, keep that in mind. For those of you who don't want him out, he's going to get out someday. And I think you have to prepare yourself for that. And to the defendant, you have to prepare yourself too. You have 
you could have easily 30, 40, or 50 years outside the prison ahead of you. That's a scenario that didn't please prosecutor Nick Lackey. This is a person who uh, came upon his mom while she was lying in her bed and stabbed her so many times that she looked like Swiss cheese and her intestines were hanging out of her body. And any sane society, if we were going to do anything, we'd be talking about increasing the penalty in this case. Victims in the state are being buried by an avalanche of pro-crime, pro-criminal legislation from pro-crime and pro-criminal politicians. Thank goodness we have an independent judiciary that's accountable to our community to act as a check on it. And I hope that's what Judge Bush does. Now, Judge Bush says he will make his ruling on March 13th. He has four options. He could leave Chamberlain's sentence the way it is, or he could remove a one-year enhancement, making Chamberlain eligible for parole in 2022 instead of 2023. He could also change Chamberlain's conviction from first-degree murder to second-degree murder, which would make him immediately eligible for parole. Lastly, he could resentence Chamberlain to probation, which would mean he'd be released from prison. In studio, I'm Olivia Lavoie. Voice 17 News.